Hi all, we're going to do a quick video on dynamic net and pet in a Cisco IOS router. Um, the topology here is uh, we've got an internal subnet at 10.10.10 10, 10 slash 0. Um, our configuration will be done in the edge router here, um, which has two ISP connections. Um, thing to note, for this video, the uh, ISP2 connection, the interface here, is in shutdown. So we only have one ISP connection out to ISP1 here. And our public subnet is triple one triple one triple one slash twenty four, and then out to the internet where there's two servers. Okay. So this is a Cisco thirty six sixty router running version twelve four, and the only config on here now really is uh, I have the uh, the three interfaces configured, but again um, the interface going to um, the secondary ISP is in shutdown, so it's not in use. And I have a default route configured pointing out to um, our next hop out to ISP1. Okay, so when you're configuring NAT in an iOS device, um, important thing to do is configure the um, interfaces to enable them to do NAT and then tell them, you know, in relationship to inside and outside. Um, where that interface sits, right? So our um, our internal interface on the 10.10.10 subnet is fast ethernet 1.0 <clears throat> and you do an IP net not ant inside, right? So he knows uh, I'm going to do net to traffic that comes through my interface and I am the inside interface and then we'll uh, we'll move to the outside interface which for us is uh, F00 which goes to ISP1 and we're going to do NAT here as well in this interface is an outside interface and uh, later on down the road when we get to the ISP2 connection again we have to go into that interface and do again IP NAT outside because it will be an outside interface um, <clears throat> so that's important you have to do that to your interfaces um, and now we'll, we'll just get to the command so we'll do dynamic uh, PAT first so we'll do an IP actually we'll create an access list um, just a standard access list and we'll permit our internal subnet um, here you need to do an inverse or uh, um, wildcard mask, sometimes you call it. Where did I get there? Too many zeros. Okay, so again, access list one, permitting just our internal subnet. Um, <clears throat> another NAT statement, so it's IP NAT uh, on the inside interface. Source, are people in list one, uh, access list one, which again is our internal subnet. Um, Going out, going out interface, uh, fast Ethernet 00, which goes to ISP1. And this overload command is actually saying do pat. And we're going to pat people, um, you know, come to the inside that match source list 1, which is our internal subnet. We're going to net them to, or pat them to, because of the overload command, the interface IP on F00. And again, that's in the triple one triple one triple one subnet. Dot 1 is the IP. Uh, so if we do a telnet, over to pub1 you can see we we're dot one on our on our outside and if in the uh, router you do a show IP net translations you can see that inside local PC1 has been added to the interface IP or padded and he's connected to pub1 over here on port 23 telnet okay so we'll just break that um, just gonna do a quick no on our that statement and get rid of that it's dynamic pat right so we're adding people on the internal interface to uh, uh, on the internal subnet going out the ISP1 interface to that interface IP, the triple one triple one triple one dot one IP. We're padding everyone there. Um, so this here was just yeah, delete all the entries that you know that went along with the the NAT command that I'm uh, deleting this one here. Okay. Um, so now we're just going to do some dynamic NAT, and so uh, we'll start off by creating a uh, NAT pool, right? So you do IP NAT pool, the pool name. We'll just call it net pool um, and then you define your uh, the, the IPs in in the pool so this is going to be um, what we want to net to so we'll we'll make it uh, dot 10 on the outside 
through dot 20. So we've got 10 IPs in there and you have to put a net mask in here. Um, and again, so we're taking a small portion of our true outside uh, subnet and that's a slash 24. So I'm going to go ahead and put a slash 24 mask in here, right? Um, so again, the command was uh, IP NAT pool, the pool name, which we called NAT pool, and then your uh, start and finish addresses for the pool, then the mask. Okay, so now we'll go ahead with our IP NAT inside source statement, just like we did uh, with the PAT. Uh, list one to say who it is, and again, that list one is our uh, uh, our internal subnet, and then you say pool and the pool name, which was NAT pool. Okay, that's it. So now when PC1 goes out to Pub1, you should be netted to one of the IPs in the pool there, as opposed to the interface IP, right? <clears throat> and sure enough, he's netted to the first IP in the pool, dot ten. Um, and over here, if we do a um, show IP net translation, you can see that PC1 was indeed netted to the static, the first static in the pool. So he has a one, uh, a one-to-one -one net over there, and um, we have a TCP session currently with pub one, right? Because that's where we telnet it from. So just break that. I'll come back here and show you one caveat about this last command we put in here. Um, so I'll just take it out. Again, do you want to remove anything related with that? Not that we're removing. Yes, I do. Um, and I'm going to paste back in the same command, IP NAT inside source, list one, pool, NAT pool, but similarly to when we padded to the interface IP, when we when we had the interface here, interface here zero, we're going to overload to the NAT pool. So now if for some reason you had millions of users, or maybe hundreds of thousands of users, um, you know, there's 65,535 ports available to use, right? Um, so if the first 65,000 users uh, would go out then as the first IP in the pool slash a port number, and then the next 65,000 user, users would go out as another IP in the pool slash a port number, and so on and so on and so on, right? So there is a net pool, but we're patting to the IPs in the pool. And I think if we, um, if we try and connect, actually I already had it in here, right? If we connect over here, You can see we're dot twelve, right? And uh, if I do another connection from PC one to or PC two, sorry, to pub one, mm, that wasn't the right password. Uh -huh. See, we're also dot twelve, right? We got dot twelve dot twelve, so it's padding us to the f to not the first, but to one of the IPs in the pool dot twelve. Um, I'll just show you here. If we do show IP net translations, right? So PC two and PC one are both connected to pub one, but they've both been added or padded to the same IP address dot 12 from the pool. Um, so again, the first 65,000 may end up getting this dot 12. And then the next 65,000 may get dot 13 and so on and so on. So, um, you know, if you happen to have, for whatever reason, you're an ISP or a massive company or something, and for whatever reason you need to do this, you could do this. Um, you don't have to have, you know, a million IPs to, to statically net them to. Um, and obviously, maybe you would, for whatever reason, you need more than the 65,535, uh, you know, uh, port translation pats. Then you can have a global pool and pat to everything in the pool. So it's sort of a net and pat uh, mix, right? Um, I guess that's it. I'm probably running pretty close to 10 minutes here. So those are the basics of dynamic pat and dynamic net. Um, but I think I'm running out of time here. So I don't know if there's anything more you want to know specifically, maybe just leave me a note on YouTube and I'll, I'll do my best to, um, to, to make a video for you. Okay, thanks.